If you feel like you're having trouble doing kaeshi though, with things like maybe you're not getting enough time to go around to get your technique, maybe you're getting hit on the way in, this video might help. Let's look at kaeshi do and the things you might want to keep in mind in order to do it better. Things like the motion of your hands, the timing of your footwork, and the use of your body. And of course, I'm going to give you some kendo tips along the way. This is going to be a general look on kaeshi do, but if you have any specific questions, make sure to leave them down in the comments below. Without wasting any time, let's get into it. And that's actually my first point don't waste time. I see many times when people are trying to do kaeshi do that the first instinct is to pull the arms back and block at the last second of the technique. I like to do it a little bit different and instead I like to try to catch my opponent's shinai as far away as possible from my body. Ideally you want to try to catch your opponent's shinai on the middle of it with around the end of your shinai. It doesn't always happen, but the farther away you can catch it, the more time and space you're gonna have to turn the sword around to hit your opponent's dough. So pretty much what I'm saying, don't waste time waiting for the sword to come all the way to you. I'm not saying that you cannot do Kaeshi Do once your opponent's sword is all the way back here. I'm just saying you might want to understand the motions and do it good before you actually make it harder on yourself. Which brings me to a quick little side note, when you're practicing Kaeshi Do, your motodachi needs to do a good small man. Back onto catching your opponent's shinai. What I like to do is I like to think about the movement of my sword just as a regular swing. My sword comes with a little bit of a tilt in order to catch my opponent's shinai and deflect the energy away. I try to keep my sword as much as possible towards my opponent and I avoid trying to keep it away and pulling back my arm towards myself. Ideally, you want to catch your opponent's shinai on the way up and immediately go around to turn it into the door. As you do the motion to go around, there will be some bending off your elbows, but please try to stay away from pulling towards your body. Instead, what you should do is you try to use your left hand to rotate the sword around and use your right hand as a rotation point. I know it might be a funny way of looking at this, but to me, it kind of feels like I'm steering a big soup with a big spoon. I know it's funny, but let me know what you think about that. I already made a video about moving your sword, so I'm not gonna go too deep into that. I just wanna let you know that for Kaeshi Do, once you're catching your opponent's shinai, you want to avoid bringing the hands further up, and you want to immediately transition into bringing the shinai down for that though. Now this next point I feel is the one that throws off people the most, and it's the timing of your foot. When you do a regular Do, you do the Fumikomi with the impact. For Kaeshi Do, you don't always do Fumikomi, but if you were to do Fumikomi or the timing for that Fumikomi would be at the time when you catch your opponent's shinai rather than the moment when you hit the Do. Because you want to use that back leg to help you push through and engage the hips into the strike. Which brings me to my next point, make sure that when you hit your opponent, you hit them with the intention towards them. I see many times that people kind of turn before they hit and they get an awkward angle of hit, they hit the wrong target. You want to avoid all this and you want to throw your body or have the intention of your body towards your opponent. And then your back leg is the one that helps you get out of the way while you drive through your opponent. At the moment of impact, make sure that your hands are in front of you. Two common mistakes that I see is that people sometimes pull their left hand a little bit too much towards the right. And another one is that they also put the left hand above the right one. This too will give you an awkward angle of striking. So you want to make sure that you keep your hands in front of you at the moment of strike. By the way, if you're getting some value from this video, take a second and please hit the like button. It really helps this channel and it also lets me know that you're enjoying this video so I can make more. And if you haven't, also subscribe to the channel so you can keep getting kendo tips your way. Now to progress into a fluid kaeshi do, Take each of the stages that I mentioned and work on them independently and connect them. Understand how to catch your opponent's shinai as you're in motion, turn the sword around to get the impact and bring in the back leg forward, and also going through. Now I talked about deflecting your opponent's shinai as far away as possible, but sometimes your opponent just happens to come closer and you need to do some things to kind of adjust yourself. One of these adjustments is that you don't have to go in forward as you're going to receive the kaeshi do. You can throw your right leg towards the right, but please keep in mind to always keep the intention towards your opponent. The other thing you can do to prevent you from being in this position is to not wait. Now, if you're still getting sloppy kaeshi do and your opponent's coming a little bit too close, it could be because you're waiting. Don't wait. Even though kaeshi do, it's an ojiwasa and you execute it after the commitment of your opponent, you have to be the one provoking them for coming into a technique. 
This way you'll be ready and you're actually anticipating their motion rather than reacting to whatever they do. There are many ways of provoking your opponent to attack, so you need to experiment. One of the most basic way of doing this is to be the first one to close the distance and pressure them into attack. I actually made a video on how Shitake Wasa can help you understand Kaioshi Wasa. You can check out that video right here. If you made it all the way here, please take a second to hit the like button. It really helps the channel and lets me know that you're enjoying this video and you want more. Let me know down in the comments below what are your kendo tips for Kaeshiwaza. If you haven't, take a second, please subscribe to the channel. And if you got some value from this video, share this with someone you want their kendo to improve. Thank you very much for watching.